f is a function defined from r to r, and we're going to say that it's defined so that the values f of x, the values of all real numbers, will always come out to be positive. That'll be important for this, for this argument. And then, if that's the case, we have some function that satisfies this, then we're going to say that, or we're going to be able to show that f of x is strictly increasing if and only if 1 over f of x is strictly decreasing. So technically, this is what we're proving. We're going to take that function satisfying those conditions at the beginning, and then we're going to show this if and only if statement. It is saying f of x is strictly increasing if and only if 1 over f of x is strictly decreasing. Okay, so just to remind ourselves, f of x is going to be increasing if x less than y implies that f of x is less than f of y. Because what we're saying is that x is increasing so along the x-axis, if we have a second value that's larger than a first value, then f of that second value better be larger than the first value also. So pause the video, see if you can guess what decreasing's definition is going to be. I'm assuming you gave it a shot here. Hopefully you thought that, well, if x is less than y, this would hopefully show that, or we would have that f of x was actually bigger than f of y. So this time, if x is further to the left than y, the output from f of x will be larger than the f of y, and the function will be decreasing. Now, technically, because I used a bigger than and a less than, instead of a bigger than or equal to and a less than or equal to, technically I'm defining strictly increasing and strictly decreasing, because that's what I'm going to use in this video. Oftentimes, if we have increasing or decreasing, we allow the condition that they might be constant. Okay, now on to the proof. So remember, as we go on to the proof, we're going to recall that f is going to be defined and we're going to have only positive values for all of the x's in the domain. So, this is an if and only if statement that we're going to be proving here, so we're going to have to go two different directions. First direction is going to be f of x is strictly increasing and then showing that 1 over f of x is strictly decreasing. So, next page, assume f of x is strictly increasing. So if f of x is strictly increasing, what is this going to mean? So let x and y come from the domain with x being less than y. Then, since f is strictly increasing, that means that f of x is going to be less than f of y, because that's the definition of being strictly increasing. But then what happens? Well, f of x and f of y, recall, are going to be positive numbers, so 1 over f of x is going to be bigger than 1 over f of y. So 1 over f of x is bigger than 1 over f of y the direction of the inequality changed. If we go back for a second and look at our definition of decreasing, in the decreasing definition we do have an f of x being bigger than an f of y. So literally what this means is that 1 over f of x is strictly decreasing because we started off with x and y with x less than y and we ended up convincing ourselves that 1 over f of x was bigger than 1 over f of y. So the inequality sign switched and our function must be decreasing. So pause the video and see if you can do the other direction. The other direction would start off with suppose 1 over f of x is strictly decreasing and see if you can use this to convince someone that f of x is strictly increasing. So assuming you paused the video and gave this a shot here, let's let x, y come from the domain with x less than y. Since 1 over x is strictly decreasing, then that would mean that 1 over f of x and 1 over f of y would have to compare backwards from the beginning. Now if we take the reciprocal of both sides, we would get that f of x and f of y 
would be compared in the opposite direction, and this this required the fact that the, this was a positive valued function, all of the values were bigger than zero, and then thus, what do we get to conclude now? Thus, since x was less than y, and now we have f of x is less than f of y, we get to conclude that f must be an increasing function, and that was what we wanted.